Hey guys, I'm Wolf here, back with another video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Gerudo. Um, for those of you that have been following the, uh, the Hyrule Conquest community, uh, specifically the multiplayer community, you know that this faction is not very popular. It's not a very good faction. It's been falling off really hard. Uh, I, originally, I thought that they were a decent faction, uh, probably you know one of the mid-tier factions. But lately, as things you know more things have been found out and things have been discovered, they're they're just lacking a lot of departments. Um, however, despite the fact that I am beginning to think that they are worse than the Gorons, I have found something that I think would really benefit the Gerudo um, in their in their play. So I was, <laughs> it's kind of funny, I was actually kind of reading stats and things like that to, uh, for notes as far as like balance and stuff goes for the future, for future patches, and I mess, was messing around with Riju actually, a hero that you even as little that you see the Gerudo, you never see that hero at all. Usually if you someone's playing the Gerudo, which is rare, you'll see like uh, Noburu and sometimes Urbosa. But I, I picked Riju and uh, I noticed that she is actually uh, very, very strong. Um, and that's that's kind of the focus of the strategy is uh, using Riju and then eventually going for Dust Sentinels because her special unit, the Dust Sentinel, is actually very, very strong. Um, the best way to describe the Dust Sentinel is basically a tanky caretaker. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's not as effective against buildings as the caretakers, but against units, it's very very strong. And Riju's ability uh, gives them a health buff, so it makes them even more durable than they already were. So I'll go ahead and get into the build real quick. So here we are, right off the bat, playing as the Gerudo. Let's do this right here. All right. Right away, the first thing you're gonna do is build Riju. The first thing before you move any of these units, before you do anything, you're gonna build Riju. The reason for that is you're going to need to get her out the second you can because you're going to need to go harass your opponent with her because Riju, much like Kazak and a few other heroes that I've noticed uh, recently, she can actually one-shot the uh, worker unit of any any faction in the game. And she's ranged, which is even better. And she's mounted, which is even more better. <laughs> so she can just like ride her sand seal around the opponent's base, sniping and picking off workers. Um, and it's really, really difficult for most players to deal with. So what you're going to do right off the bat, like I mentioned, is build Riju. Your Trailblazer is going to go kite some of these sand seals close to your base because you're going to need a lot of food with this build. And the Gerudo really struggle with food, so that's important. There you go. You see Riju comes out. She's going to go to our opponent's base. We sent the Glaive Grunts onto the Cocos here, and we sent our Artisans onto the Berries. And as soon as she comes out, we're going to go ahead and build four. You will have the resources for four, trust me. We're going to build four Artisans, and these ones are going to build a house because you don't want to cap yourself out. It's very easy to cap yourself out as this faction. Yeah, you see our, sand, our uh, Trailblazer bringing in these Sand Seals close to our base. Another thing too, all Sand Seals can go over water, so this is really handy for uh, the uh, the Gerudo on um, on Gerudo Oasis because she can you know kite enemies and then go hide in the Oasis so they can't catch uh, catch her. So you see these four workers are going to come out, build this house, and then we're building some more workers. Still getting these Sand Seals into our base. You see Riju gonna go snipe off some of these uh, these opponents. Riju's an interesting character. I really liked her in Breath of the Wild, and I kind of like the uh, concept that Nephilim is uh, actually going for with uh, with Riju and his lore. We haven't seen her in any of the cinematics or anything, but we do know that she is the uh, uh, the princess and the daughter and of uh, Gandorf, and she's his heir. But you see here, as soon as she, she can just pick off these workers in one shot, you saw there how fast she just killed those two workers. Just gonna kill some units and then get out of there. That's what you're gonna do with this hero. So you see, they're just constantly building some artisans onto the, uh, or I'll say workers to make it uh, simpler. But we're building a bunch onto the wood here. And you're gonna want to have about 15-ish before you start building them onto food and uh, and other resources. And you see here, Riju, we're gonna just gonna kill a couple units, go into the oasis so they can't catch us, and then go back. You see here, we're at about 11. Where's our trailblazer? All right. Another thing you can do is take your trailblazer to also go and harass. Um, something I'll do with the trailblazer sometimes is I'll like walk around their base, and if I see like they queued up a building, um, before their worker goes over there to build it, while the building's at like one HP, I'll have the trailblazer snipe it and then run away. So that's really effective. But you see here, Riju so strong. She can she just took out that uh that archer in like two hits. She's a very strong hero. Usually in this situation, you'll want to just like kite these units and go look for workers to snipe them but the AI doesn't quite act like a human player so it, it acts uh, a little different but 
See here, still building workers onto the wood line here. We have about 15, so now at this point, we're probably gonna try to get some more on the food. But you definitely wanna try to have at least three to four houses up before you start to build anything else. Um, you see here, I bought that first house, or built that first house initially, and then as we get the resources, we're building these two. Still just gonna go and harass. Like, you gotta lay on the pressure. You can't let it stop. So, the next couple workers we're actually probably gonna get are gonna go over here and build a mill. Now, the, the reason you build a mill down here, on this map specifically, uh, it may differ on a, depending on the map, but on Gerudo Oasis specifically, and you need to know this because it's like the standard 1v1 map, you're gonna wanna build it down by the Oasis because there's bushes down here, and we've been actually cutting our sand seals not really to our base, but actually down here. So you see here, these workers that we're building from here are gonna go work on this mill and then start uh, getting food from these sand seals and these bushes. Do you see here, Riju, she's just sniping these workers one by one. Look how fast, she can just, in one shot, she can just kill them. Yeah, you see there, just one shot. Boom, there goes another one. Like, it's so strong. Also, at this point too, um, after you've got about three houses and this mill, you need to do this after you get the mill. Um, because if you do, uh, you're gonna be like have a bunch of idle workers and be l lacking on food because you don't have this mill up. But after you get that up, you're gonna want to get two, preferably like two, maybe three if you have the resources, uh, swine farms. Um, you're gonna use want to use the workers that you had on your berries right here to do this because at this point in the game your berries are gonna be getting very low. So see here, I'm building a fourth house because we're getting our close to our population cap. See with Riju just, I pretty much killed like five workers and then just ran away before my opponent could really do anything. So that's crazy, that's really strong. Let's see here, still constantly building workers onto the sand seals and the food that's just down here in general. Yeah, see our opponent can't catch us in here unless they're the Zora. But, now this fact, this uh, strategy w is a very effective in the early game due to the f of how strong of a harassing hero Riju is um, and into the mid game it's pretty strong as well because of the uh, dust sentinels but in the late game it might struggle against some factions like the Gorons and whatnot with their uh, their kick throwers and whatnot so that's something to keep in mind but you see here once uh, once you have all your berries gone you're definitely gonna want to have four farms like the four workers that you sent onto your berries have each of them onto a farm basically and that combined with the workers you have down here getting the berry bushes and the sand seals so you're gonna be doing fine on uh, food income so yeah you're gonna have Riju here just constantly go and harass she can, she just not only does she one shot the uh, the worker unit for every faction but she's very good against a lot of citizen soldiers as well and during this point in the game for a lot of factions that's all your opponent really has so that's really good you see here we're just getting all the food from there uh, we put it on the very edge of our territory because unfortunately we're not tier 2 but we're actually going to be getting there really soon. You see here, you want to hit tier 2 before 7 minutes comes. Um, the reason for that being, you really want to try to at least have your first set of sen uh, dust sentinels out ar by around the 10 minute mark. Um, also, um, well actually I'll get to it once I get my um, sand seal pen up soon. But uh, I'll talk about it then. You see here, we got all these workers on the, on the wood. We got these workers on the farms. And then we got these ones down here on the food. You see here, we're going for tier 2. Definitely want to try and get that before t uh, 7 minutes hits. If Riju gets below half health, you need to take her back to let her heal or just like not go harass for a little bit. Um, because you definitely do not want to lose this hero at any point. If you lose uh, Riju, like if you let her get killed, that's a big setback for you. Um, but yeah, so you're going to want to just try to, at this point, you're going to wait till you get about 500 materials and then you're going to go for a sand seal pen. Try to get some more houses up as well if you can. What you see here, we just snipe these workers with Riju. Like, look at that. That's three dead workers right there that she just sniped within like a couple of seconds. Boom, there goes another one. So good, so strong. But pretty much just waiting it out here. Uh, just constantly building workers, of course. You're going to want to start saving food later for your sand seals, specifically dust sentinels, because they do cost a lot of food. What do you see here? Getting the sand seal pen up. Get some of them dust sentinels. You see here, Riju's getting pretty low for me. I'm probably going to bring her back here because Riju, on top of being able to um, 
one-shot your opponent's workers and being a strong, very strong hero. She also provides a minus 50% batch uh, build time for all Sancio units, which is really effective. So it really helps you get some of these dust mills out. So we're going to bring her back here in just a second to get her inside of the uh, Sancio pen and start getting some of these dust mills out really fast. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up for you guys so you don't have to sit here and wait. You see here, you're going to want to do this as well. Once you tech up, it might be, if you have the resources, um, because you're not going to really need materials at all, um, it might be nice to get a supply mill up even closer to the oasis so you can start gathering faster. Um, also, around the time that you get the sand seal up, or the sand seal pin up, it might be a good idea to start building workers onto the ore and onto the rupees as well, because you're going to need uh, both of those to uh, build these dust sentinels. So here we got Riju in there. Go ahead and speed it up for you guys, because they do, even with uh, Riju's build time, they do take a little while. But you see here, we're at about the 10 minute mark. We get our first group of sand seals out, like I said. This is going to be really strong. Uh, even if you only have three, these units right here are very, very strong. Like I mentioned, they're a, a tanky caretaker, if that means anything to you guys. Um, of course, they're not nearly as strong, but they are very comparable in uh, power against units um, to, the, to the caretaker. And they're very tanky as well. They have a lot of armor and they have really good HP as well. So you see here, I'm getting a tower up mainly just for defense, because um, with this build, you can build more grunts as opposed to artisans if you want to. If you're worried of like for like defending your base, I would encourage you to do that um, in some situations. Uh, but you are gonna want to, you know, make sure you always have these houses up and never cap yourself out, because you're gonna need to constantly be producing dust sentinels. This unit is so cool. Check it out. So cool, in my opinion. You see, they sniped that house right there. But oh yeah, another thing I want to mention too: once this uh, wood line is gone, you can ch opt to uh, to gather from the other wood lines and like build another mill. But I prefer to just uh, get them on the stone here. It keeps them close to my base and easier to defend in some situations. You see, here bringing in more dust sentinels. These dust sentinels are so strong against units. Let's take those out real quick. Well, we got a bunch more on the way. Go ahead and speed it up for you guys. These units are super strong. They capture buildings really fast as well. See, we got more coming in there. Still producing groups of sand seals. Um, you can opt to go for multiple sand seal pens if you have the resources. I was spending most of my resources here on uh, on houses, but if you have more workers on materials, I would definitely recommend you at least get a second one up. We got a whole bunch of sand seals here. Now we're gonna bring in Riju with our group here. You see, once they get into formation, let me slow it down for you guys. Whoops. When they're in a formation. Riju gives them a health bonus, so it gives them a good significant amount of health uh, that makes them even more tanky. But you see how fast they took out that worker, or the, I'm sorry, that uh, soldier, so, so good. But you're still going to be producing more from your base as you have the resources. Such a good unit. Very accurate as well. Very, very accurate. But if you had the resources, you should probably try to get a second one. Um, also, like I mentioned, you don't want to cap yourself out. You got to be careful with that. Um, but you also have to keep in mind your food income because you're going to need a lot of food if you're producing sand seals constantly. So always make sure you're keeping an eye on uh, the workers down at the oasis and whatnot. Um, whoops. And make sure that they're always constantly producing the food. That good old food. But you see here, have all these sand seals still bringing in more. Such a strong unit. How fast they take out all these these workers. They're pretty good against buildings as well, but they are very, very, very good at uh, capturing buildings as opposed to destroying them. Go ahead and speed it up for you guys so you all can see. 
pretty much anything my opponent throws at me at this point, they can just snipe before they even get close to them. Which is really strong. They're still pretty good against buildings, though. They're, they're not bad, but uh, they're definitely stronger at uh, capturing them as opposed to uh, destroying them. But you see, we got all these sand seals here. This is very difficult to deal with. Look how fast they capture these buildings. Like, even, I know this is sped up, but still, like, it's very, very fast. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the strategy. Um, I hope that made sense to you guys. Uh, basically, what you're doing is, you're, uh, in summary, what you're doing is you're harassing with Riju uh, as much as you can until you can get to tier 2. And then once you hit tier 2, you're just going to start pumping out as many Dust Sentinels as you can. Uh, you could definitely do this, uh, do the eco a little bit better, um, but this is mainly, this video, or replay, I'm sorry, was mainly just to show you guys, like, what it does and how you should play it, just so you can get the idea. Um, I hope this really helps you guys, for anyone out there that's still trying to play this faction, or maybe that's interested in, to play, in playing this faction but hasn't found anything good with it, I hope this really helps you. Um, I know it helped me, because I've been, I'm a big fan of the Gerudo, and I really wish, um, that they've been, like, that they had something good, and I've been trying on my streams, for those of you that have been watching, uh, <laughs> I've been playing the Gerudo a lot in the, in training mode, or just labbing with the Gerudo in general, just to try and, like, find something good that I can use them for, uh, like, in a competitive match, but I, I think this is a really good strategy. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope... It, uh, you will be sure to like and subscribe. Feel free to join my Discord if you want to discuss strategies or if you have any questions or anything. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys next time.